Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about OM number 49, Indium. Indium is not named for India or Indiana, although it's called Indium, or any other piece of geography. It is named for the strong indigo blue spectral emission line that was the first evidence of its existence. It's said that until 1924, only a gram of it had been isolated in the whole world, but these days, hundreds of tons a year go into the production of LCD televisions and computer monitors. In that application, it is in the form of Indium tin oxide, again tin is element number 50. There's a link in the description below if you're interested in learning learning about the element tin. In that application, it is in the form of indium tin oxide, a transparent conductor of electricity that allows signals to be communicated to the individual pixels in a display without blocking the light from all other pixels. The pure element itself is also a good conductor, but not at all transparent, being a soft, silvery, and quite fun metal. In pure form, it is so soft you can easily dent it with your fingernails or even shave off slices of it with your pocket knife. So far as it is known, indium is not toxic, always a nice bonus for the element that is fun to play with. Because indium is one of the very few metals that wet glass, rather than being repelled by its surface, it can be used as a gasket material in high vacuum applications where any sort of rubber gasket would be hopelessly porous by the standards of the vacuum you are trying to achieve. Indium shares an interesting property with its neighbor, tin. If you're interested in learning about tin, the link is in the description below. When bars or rods of either metal are bent, they quote unquote cry. Uh, producing a cracking sound as the internal crystals break and rearrange. While quite a few people have heard of the tin cry, the indium cry is a more exclusive experience. So it conducts electricity and is transparent, which makes it useful for electronic devices. And here we have India and Indiana. India is a country in South Asia, and Indiana is a state in the United States. This is India's flag, and this is Indiana's flag. Most indium is used to make indium tin oxide, or ITO, which is an important part of touchscreens, flat screen TVs, and solar panels. This is because it conducts electricity, bonds strongly to glass, and is transparent. Indium nitride, phosphide, and antimonide are semiconductors used in transistors and microchips. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and antimony are all related. Indium metal sticks to glass and can be used to give a mere finish to all windows or tall buildings and as a protective film on welder's goggles. It has also been used to coat ball bearings in Formula 1 racing cars because of its low friction. A ball bearing is a type of rolling element bearing that uses balls to maintain the separation between the bearing races. The purpose of a ball bearing is to reduce rotational friction and support radial and axial loads, according to Wikipedia. Its invention date was in 1794 and here's a map of 1794 CE. So indium. An indium alloy has been used for fire sprinkler systems in shops and warehouses because of its low melting point. Again, as previously mentioned, indium is used in touchscreens. Most indium is used to make indium tin oxide, an important component of touchscreen devices. It's also used in motor racing. Indium is used to coat the ball bearings in some Formula 1 cars due to its low friction coefficient, and also sprinklers. Indium alloys with low melting points are used in shop and warehouse fire sprinkler systems. Here we have indium antimonide, indium and antimony indium and phosphorus, and indium and nitrogen. Here we have a transistor. The transistor is one of the basic building blocks of modern electronics. It is composed of semiconductor material, usually with at least three terminals with connection to an electronic circuit, according to Wikipedia. Here we have mill finish indium, brush finish indium, and mill finish indium. Again, indium conducts electricity, bonds strongly to glass, and is transparent. Here we have welder's goggles. Indium is a chemical element with the symbol IN and atomic number 49. Indium is the softest metal that is not an alkali metal. It is a silvery white metal that resembles tin in appearance. It is a post-transition metal that makes up 0.21 parts per million of the Earth's crust, according to Wikipedia. Its symbol is IN, its atomic number is 49, its electron configuration is krypton, 4d10, 5s2, 5p1, its melting point is 313.9 degrees Fahrenheit, or 156.6 degrees Celsius. Its atomic mass is 114.818 units. Its boiling point is 3,762 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2,072 degrees Celsius. Its van der Waals radius is 220 picometers. Indium has the unusual property when molten of clinging to, wetting, clean glass, and other surfaces. This makes it valuable for producing hermetic seals between glass, metals, quartz, ceramics, and marble. So what is the purpose of a hermetic seal? Hermetic sealing is the process of creating a container of some sort that is airtight. That means that any material in the container, whether it's a gas, liquid, or solid, will not leak from the container. Hermetic sealing is commonly used to encase electrical mechanisms as well as to contain functional gases. Hermetic sealing is the creation of a container that's airtight to gas, liquids, or solids and will not leak from the container.
Indium is used in coating aircraft engine bearings because it improves corrosion resistance and enables the surface to retain a more adherent oil film. It is an ingredient in some low melting alloys and used in sprinkler heads, fire door links, and fusible plugs, some as previously mentioned. The metal is extensively employed in the manufacture of semiconductor devices and for soldering varying parts of germanium transistors and rectifiers. A rectifier is an electrical device that converts alternating current, AC, which periodically reverses direction, to direct current, DC, which flows only in one direction. The reverse operation is performed by the inverter. The process is known as rectification since it straightens the direction of the current, according to Wikipedia. Indium is also used to measure the thermal neutron flux of nuclear reactors and to monitor neutrons for the protection of personnel and equipment. Natural indium is a mixture of two isotopes, indium-113, 4.28%, and indium-115, 95.72%. So corrosion resistance. Corrosion resistance is the capacity to hold the binding energy of a metal and withstand the deterioration chemical breakdown that would otherwise occur when the metal is exposed to such environments. According to corrosionpedia.com. So here we have indium, element number 49. I'm one class act baby, believe me. A soft sticky metal with a low melting point when I team up with oxygen and tin. I come into my own. Indium tin oxide is see-through and conducts electricity. It is used for solar cells and LCD displays, touchscreen technology for cell phones, and window demisters for cars. Its date of discovery was in 1864. Its density is 7.31 grams per centimeters cubed. Its melting point is 156.6 degrees Celsius or 313.8 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 2,072 degrees Celsius or 3,762 degrees Fahrenheit. Indium. When electricity is passed through indium atoms, they glow in indigo color, which is where the metal gets its name from. Indium is used to make very thin electrical wires that run through the touchscreens of cell phones, black crystals of safflorite, or ore of indium. Its atomic mass is 114.818. Its state is a solid. Its discovery was in 1863 by Ferdinand Reich and Hieronymus Richard. So indium was discovered in 1863 by Ferdinand Reich at the Friedberg School of Mines in Germany. Reich was investigating a sample of mineral zinc blend, now known as safflorite, or one atom of zinc combined to one atom of sulfur, which he believed might contain the recently discovered element thallium, which we will talk about in a future video. Thallium is element number 81. From it, he obtained a yellow precipitate, which he thought was thallium sulfide but his atomic spectroscope showed lines that were not those of thallium. However, because he was colorblind, he asked Hieronymus Richard to look at the spectrum and noted a brilliant violet line. Colorblindness, also called color vision deficiency. So a person with normal vision would see an apple this color, and a person with colorblindness would see an apple this color. So colorblindness is a reduced ability to distinguish between certain colors. The condition is often inherited. Other causes include certain eye diseases and medications. More men than women are affected. There is no treatment for inherited colorblindness. Colorblindness usually involves the inability to distinguish between shades of red and green. If colorblindness is caused by another condition, treating the underlying cause can help. However, because he was colorblind, he asked Hieronymus Richard to look at the spectrum and he noted a brilliant violent line. And this eventually gave rise to the name indium, from the Latin word indicum, meaning violet. Working together, Reich and Richard isolated a small sample of the new element and announced its discovery. Subsequently, the two men fell out and Reich learned that when Richard, on a visit to Paris, claimed he was the discoverer. Their falling out is a little unfortunate, but that's the history of indium. So indium, I-N, chemical element, it's a rare metal of main group 13, or the boron group of the periodic table. Indium has a brilliant silvery white luster. It was discovered in 1863 by this individual here, Ferdinand Reich. He was a German chemist who co-discovered indium in 1863 with Hieronymus Theodor Richer. He was colorblind or could not see in whites and blacks. And that is why Theodor Richer became his science partner. Hieronymus Theodor Richer was a German chemist. He was born in Dresden. In 1863, while working at the Friedberg University of Mining and Technology, he co-discovered indium with Ferdinand Reich. The presence of a predominant indigo spectral line suggested the name, as previously mentioned. Indium is softer than lead and quite plastic. It can be scratched with a fingernail and can undergo almost limitless deformation. 
Like tin, the pure metal emits a high-pitched quote-unquote cry when bent. Indium is about as rare as silver. Earth's crust contains on average about 0.05 parts per million indium by weight. The element does not occur uncombined or in independent minerals, but occurs as a trace in many minerals, particularly those of zinc and lead, from which it is obtained as a byproduct. Again, indium can be scratched with just your fingernail. Indium metal is unaffected by air at ordinary temperatures, but at a red heat, it burns with a blue-violet flame to form the yellow oxide IN2O3, which consists of two atoms of indium and three atoms of oxygen. This oxide is easily reduced to the metal and on strong heating, it loses oxygen to give the monoxide IN2O, where indium is in the plus one oxidation state. Indium hydroxide dissolves in both acids and alkalis. Here we have the unbalanced formula, IN plus O2 forms IN2O3. Here's the unbalanced formula, IN plus O2 forms IN2O3. And here's the balanced formula, 4 moles of indium plus 3 moles of O2 form 2 moles of IN2O3. And as previously mentioned, on heating IN2O3, you decompose it to IN2O and O2. Here's acids and bases. Again, an acid is a molecule or ion capable of either donating a proton, known as a bronsted Lowry acid, or forming a covalent bond with an electron pair, known as a Lewis acid. The first category of acids are the proton donors or bronsted Lowry acids, according to Wikipedia. And bases? In chemistry, there are three definitions in common use of the word base, known as arenas bases, bronsted bases, and Lewis bases. All definitions agree that bases are substances which react with acids as originally proposed by G.F rule in the mid 18th century according to wikipedia indium is an amphoteric element it dissolves in acids to give indium salts and it also dissolves in concentrated alkalis to give indates however it is unaffected by potassium hydroxide or boiling water when heated in the presence of the halogens or sulfur direct combination takes place though a few authentic indium compounds halides have been prepared in which the element is in the plus one oxidation state indium commonly displays the plus three oxidation state in its compounds with the main group 15 elements indium forms compounds, indium nitride, indium phosphide, indium arsenide, and indium antimonide that have semiconductor properties. Nanostructured indium compounds have been developed, including indium nitride INN nanorods for high-speed field effect transistors and light-emitting diodes LEDs, which can be used in televisions and computer displays. All anhydrous triply charged indium derivatives except indium trifluoride INF3 are covalent. There is a marked tendency for two of the other electrons of the indium atom, the outer 5s2 electrons, not to be used in bonding. This circumstance results in singly charged indium compounds. Indium is one of the least abundant minerals on earth. It has been found uncombined in nature, but typically it is found associated with zinc minerals and iron, lead, and copper ores. It is commercially produced as a byproduct of zinc refining. So that was Indium Explained in as a short amount of time as possible. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one.